Welcome to Security Matters Hawaii. I know I'm not Andrew. Our award-winning host is away for the week. He'll be back with you very soon. Until then, you got to deal with me. I'm Dave, uh, formerly the Cyber Guy, now known as the Professor. I work for the University of Hawaii Kapiolani Community College, and I teach network security and ethical hacking. And I'm here with some guys from Insacom, and we're going to talk about their organization. It's an open source community organization. They run Hacker High School. I know you want to know all about it. First of all, he Herzog, yeah. you're the managing director, yes. Asacom, yeah, yeah. and Bob, Bob Monroe. Monroe. <laughs> you have such a difficult name. Yeah, it's God. tough. <laughs> uh, no, you want to be board member, but you're also a technical writer. Yes. So you help with this stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much the, the lead you're writer. You're the author. Yeah. He's, he's one of the, the main writers on there. So I, I would say that most of the writing is handled by the two of us, right? Pretty uh, much. Yeah, pretty so much it's a small everything. org. Well, no, tell me, first of all, a little bit about you, who, who you are, how you got into this organization, and then what is the organization? So basically, ISACOM, the Institute for Security and Open Methodologies, is an organization we built to support the Awesome, which is the Open Source Security Testing Methodology Manual, uh, a manual for penetration testing and analysis. It's basically a standard that I wish I didn't name that because I had no idea it was going to be so successful. I would have <laughs> named it something like the Dragon or something cool, right? <laughs> but I did what I did, and uh, and so I'm stuck with it now for almost 20 years. Yeah, it's okay. From now on, every one of my blogs is going to be the Dragon. I'm going to yeah, talk uh, about the Dragon. The Dragon. And that's what it is. Uh, something cool. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Hawaii, mongoose, I don't know. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I'm stuck with this name. Anyway, so we built the organization to support it. What ended up happening is, is that we were certifying people in the Austin as a standard, which is a way of how you penetration test and do security analysis and this kind of thing. And what we found was that the younger the, the, younger the, the, the person was taking the exam, because we were doing some universities, the better they were scoring. And, uh, and just, we were talking, I was one of the University of La Salle that we were working with at the time. Uh, we still have a great partnership. And, and the, I said to, to the, uh, the head guy there, uh, Jalma, I said, so I wonder how young we can go and they'll still pick this up because their grades were getting better the younger because they didn't have to unlearn all the, all the crap, basically. That the, That's the problem with adults, heads. isn't it? Yeah. We have to unlearn and open our minds and accept the new, right? But yeah. They just kind of absorb it. It's, that's right. They just take it as that's, that's it. That's how it is, and that's how it works. And since it's very logical and it makes sense, they just pick it up right away as, right. as the way to go. And, uh, and so we, we sort of put this thing together called Hacker High School back in 2003 already. Uh, just as a as That's a way. ancient times. I know. Wow. I know. And it just did miserably. Nobody wanted it. Teachers wouldn't learn. They they we put on these classes for teachers to to <laughs> learn security to bring cyber. And well, MySpace was still popular. In yeah. Three right. Facebook AOL. Was, <laughs> AOL AOL still going. But we had we had twelve lessons out there, uh, and and it was uh, we just couldn't get schools to pick it up. They were afraid of the word hacker. They were afraid of. Uh, having kids have this sort of independent learning. Uh, they, they were afraid, and we couldn't get teachers to learn it to want to bring it into schools. Now you're talking about public schools. All schools. As oh, a matter of fact, yeah. the only schools who really picked up on it back then was private schools, especially uh, religious private schools. I, I was gonna, I would've said, working with the Department of Education in any area, massively difficult when it comes to learning outcomes, yeah. right? So you try to introduce something like hacking as a learning outcome, Oh, there's a big bureaucracy in the way. But private schools would have a little bit more openness right. and opportunity to to expand and to... So military academies stuff. was yeah. another one that, that picked up on I it. I would hope so. And, and uh, we, we did pretty well there. Uh, but it just, yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a, a project that was just a, an albatross, really. It was just bringing us down. We were, we were doing well with certifications in the Austin. And we were really trying to get this out to young people because it was so important, but nobody was touching it until about... 2014, I think, we, we so had a big turnaround. was the big uh, news? On, uh, 2014 was kind of this asymptotic curve of accelerated hacking it just across took, the world, so, right? So <clears throat> is that, do you think that was the, the, the fulcrum? I think that was a big part of it. I think, well, back in 2012, we started rewriting all the lessons so that the students teach themselves. We, we, we really focused, back in 2009 already, we started working on how people learn in general. We started doing this whole... Uh, uh, neuro hacking thing for for uh, for social engineering and all this kind of stuff and and uh, oh my favorite is that's, that's my favorite toy is the human mind yeah I mm -hmm. love messing with people so social engineering awesome so we use this to figure out how teens actually learn and then did you figure it out 
Yes, actually we did. We did really well. I raised well four teens and I taught high school and I still don't know. It's, you guys uh, got to impart this wisdom. Well, it's right there. Well, oh, we, we actually made the books, books based on how they learn. That okay. was the whole point. Sure, it's not perfect for everything, but for the most part, based on the information we know about learning, we went the best way we could. And, and so uh, we, we put as much effort into to making this. Bob did a lot of the narratives. He, he kind of guided the, the, the storyline for, for each lesson that we did. So are all uh, paragraphs only 140 words? <laughs> Actually, the text version is going to have to be, right? <laughs> <laughs> really <small. Yeah. laughs> Twitter Emojis. Stuff. Yeah, it's just emojis. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, they'd really do well with that. So that's, I, I like this. It's, it's, is this a, kind of a self-guided tour? Yeah, so that, it's completely self-learning. We, we took the actual teachers out of it. We, we put in, what happened was we stumbled into this thing called gradeless learning. Uh, that there was this huge thing for it online. Great, this sounds like something out of Santa Cruz, California. Yeah, I tell you, and and we <laughs> thought, you know, it was it was this grassroots effort. They were trying to get picked up, and we were a grassroots effort. You know, we stopped going to the schools. I talked to one uh, superintendent from a bunch of schools, I think in Philadelphia, I think it was, and and she said, we we love the idea. We this was back in 2014 already. We love the idea. We think it would be great. Uh, we don't want to deal with PDFs. If you guys made books. We would buy them and we would do it. They just didn't want to have to print out the material. Oh. So it, it was like this this light went off, like, oh my God, we should have a book. Choir saying? People yeah. don't want it for free, they want to buy it. What? And, and then. That's uh, too bad. <laughs> I know. So we left the free ones out there. We made books from it. I, we made actually these three books and another book on uh, How the Hacker Stole Christmas. We, we did all four books in one month to, oh. to present it at RSA. So we did one one book a week, and uh, yeah, and it, I th we sold out at RSA, right? We we sold out in in two days. Yeah, we had a wow. backlog. Yeah, and we had to start getting printouts to ship to people. Um, we sold over yeah thousands, and and now they're they're just people are picking up on it. They're getting translated into other languages. We're getting the whole set now translated into Polish, uh, because. Uh, uh, they want to put all their military grunts through it as part of basic training. They want, to, they want a version of this, not exactly this. It's most of the same stuff, the same material. It's just with less teen. But the, 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 the people entering the military there are 18, 19. So they actually fit within our... That's your demographic. In our demographic. Yeah. yeah. No, so Bob was also telling me you were in somewhat 50 countries. Or 50 languages? No, 12 different, uh, we're translating 12 in 12 different, different languages. languages 50 countries. Yeah, we're somewhere around there. Somewhere That's around a huge there. organization, but you guys don't seem like you're that large in staff. Right. You're just doing this incredible work worldwide on minimal yeah, resources? We, we get a lot of volunteers, uh, people in their own countries who want to run it. The, we have a guy, uh, Starry, out in, in, uh, in Myanmar. He just... Loved it. He took over. He started a Facebook page on it. He started, you know, bringing. I think he's got five thousand people Myanmar? plus. Yeah, there. As a matter of fact, it's it's very popular. It's probably our most popular country, and uh, they just self teach. They use the PDF lessons. They translate it themselves, and that's oh. what a lot of places do. They just run it. We've got a guy now in Russia who's who's doing the translations. We let people just take. Is that over. a good idea? You know, we get. <laughs> We, we thought about this. We did. Uh, Russia. Hmm. Well, there, w there was an incident where uh, it was in Spain. I got an email back from uh, a gentleman that was translating it in Spain. And yeah. he wrote me back and he said, if I translate this one particular um, exercise. Police cars, right? Yeah. If I translate this into Spanish, I could be arrested. I said, then don't translate that part. <laughs> it was about hacking police cars. And... Uh, and there, it's it's not even something you can joke about or, or talk about. Uh, and you know, obviously, we allow certain leeway, and we end up making a lot of good connections in different countries where we can have other people proof yeah. what's already been translated. That way, somebody doesn't stick things in there that shouldn't be. You know. Well, that's so odd. I always thought uh, Spain was such a casual, easygoing it's a, it's place. A kingdom of Spain. It's a <laughs> it's a monarchy. I mean. Yeah, but they're so relaxed. It depends where. I'm totally kidding. Right? <laughs> Maybe along the Med somewhere, right? Right. not the rest of the country. Uh, really. There's, there's <laughs> different rules in different countries everywhere. So I would imagine. How do you keep track of that? Do you uh, have a spreadsheet somewhere? We, we use Slack. <laughs> we use, uh, yeah, we use spreadsheets. We you use, guys use we Slack? People. Yeah. 
And how do you keep that secure? Uh, well, we don't have to. We're an open organization. So we just have okay, to worry so about the, the integrity of okay. the stuff. Not All right. The, Good. <laughs> it's just more for communications. <laughs> Our students were using Slack for some of their communication. I said, you better watch what you're putting out there. And I had to, you know, reemphasize some of the communication met methods they use because, you know, you were telling me, kids grew up with this technology. It's kind of ubiquitous. They just kind of accept it. But some of them really do need to know the foundations of the technology. Now, we always tell you a smartphone. And I asked them, what's the lowest tech word that you can come up with to describe that device? And none of them got it until one person who was in his 40s said, it's a radio. Mm -hmm. And it transmits every single direction, all at the same time, unencrypted. So that's why you don't text somebody, let's kill him tonight. Right? Yeah. You know, now it's evidence. That's but, why you use signal for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or what is a wicker? There's a, I, I can't <laughs> keep up with them all, honestly. A, they come and then they go. So right. we, we actually use teenagers to tell us what, what they're doing. And some of the parents will take screenshots of the, of, the, of the phones to show us the main apps because the, the teens will put on the main page the main apps that they use. So that way they, they can share with us what's going on and we investigate. And honestly, uh, I, some of them they make no sense to me. They, they're just not interesting. Like it, it's such a grind. To, to actually be on some of these apps and well, that, games. That's just kind of being a parent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a grind to be a parent, trying to <laughs> investigate what your kids are doing. Uh, eventually, everyone gives up. That's high school. Uh, I, I'm glad you guys are introducing this hacker high school. When the teens are at the point where the parents can't keep up anymore, you're introducing this material that actually guides them down, you know, a path that was, we th think is acceptable, right? Rather than, well, we like you're saying, the dark side. We don't tell them what to do. That's, a, that's one of the things about learning for teens is you can't just go and say, no, do this, because then they'll say, oh, screw you, we're going to do something else. And, and, and that's, really? My daughters were like that. Yeah. <laughs> really? No, I'm kidding. It's <laughs> totally like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, Instant yeah. rebellion. <laughs> and that's the point. I mean, so we, we wrote the lessons with, with empathy, with thought about consequences, but never telling them, don't do this, don't, which is what all of the other material out there uh, and there's, there's no real curriculum out there, but what is out there for schools, especially for free, starts with page one, you're a criminal if you download this, if you do this, if you, do, you know, and it's all the, you know, do not, do not. And, and of course, where's the success in that, you know? It's, uh, it's wonderful that you're teaching people how this happens. I don't think a lot of people in organizations, any organization actually understand this, unless you've had this kind of training, you don't understand that Unless you learn how the hackers do what they do, it's extraordinarily difficult to catch somebody who's doing that on your network. But if you've done it, you know, I'm going to leave footprints here. I'm going to have to break in here. This is the protocol for, that I'm going to use. Metasploit's a great tool, and it uses all these other scripts. And if you can learn how the, the hackers do that, then you can mitigate that on a network, and you can defend yourself. But I don't think a lot of organizations understand that. That's why I think this is so glorious. Well, part of the, the hacking part of it, though, is also the how hackers teach themselves and how they work in small groups and they, they get information and they research. All this is great. Stuff Problem just, solving and self-learning. Mm -hmm. awesome. part, of, part of what every school would want, you'd think, you know, that, that they I can... I would think. <laughs> that they can go out and... But uh, it makes them better students. At the, I mean, you've been teaching now uh, teenagers for a while, right? Yeah, right here in Hawaii. Two and a half years. And you're, but you one, survived. Well, one of, the th one of the concepts we bring across is... Uh, a mechanic needs to be able to take apart an engine, needs to be able to take apart a car to fix it. Sure. A surgeon, same thing, needs to know how they do autopsies and they work on cadavers and everything else. Uh, most professions, you, know, you need to know how the thing works, how whatever it is that you're working in. So we take the same approach. In order for me to know how a network works, I need to know how to take it apart. So what we're going to take a one-minute break, and we're coming right back, and you're going to continue on that point because it's a great point. We've got to pay some bills. Have a couple of commercials. Got it. Everybody, Security Matters will be right back. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha.
Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at three, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Welcome back to Security Matters. I'm your guest host, Dave Stevens, the professor. I'm here with Pete Herzog, Bob Monroe of ISACOM. And Bob, you were just telling us about how you like your teachers to break it down and teach others how to break down the systems that they need to fix. You were telling us about the analogy of the auto mechanic needs to know how to break down an entire engine before he can start to fix engines. So tell us more about that theory and how you put that into books. Well, for example, um one of the classes I did a couple of weeks ago uh, to demonstrate how radio communication works, how cell phones work. Um, two soup cans, a piece of string, connect them. And you got one kid on one end, the other kid on the other end, and they get to understand how a wave works across it, uh, across the string. And it's very inexpensive, but it illustrates the point of how a radio works, how a cell phone works, how it talks to the tower and the tower communicates back to it. Um, very How simple. Denial of service works. Yeah. <laughs> just clip, clip the string in there. You got a DDoS. Right. If you clip it in multiple places, you got a DDoS. Right. Um, but the but the principal idea behind it is um, being able to disassemble something. And yes, you may not be able to put it back together again. But the idea is for you to learn from what you took apart, and then you figure out how to put it back together again. You need to do that same thing with security networks. When we do auditing and when we do the OSTEM, we need to know exactly how that network works, what are the interactions, uh, how the environment works. And students, are, or our teens we're teaching, are phenomenal when it comes to this. Their curiosity levels are through the roof. Uh, we were talking the other day, we got nine-year-olds that are running bash scripts. That fifth grader I was talking to before the show, running around with two computer books in his backpack. Uh, well, you spark the interest. And I think that's one of the biggest problems with school in general. It was when I went, I don't know about you guys, but I got really bored learning the Revolutionary War for the eighth time. You know, in every grade you do the same oh, history I, class. My teenagers now, their books, I look at their history books, I'm like, who, who learns like this? You know? <laughs> no wonder I, I was so bored at school. It's so boring. It is boring And stuff, the thing is, right? the story, like what, what my wife started doing actually for, for helping them learn history, is start teaching it like the gossip it is that you're, they're used to hearing on TV, like the Kardashians and stuff. She actually can take all the things with the, the monarchy and the, and the, the fights and everything, the infighting, oh, yeah. and turn it into drama that, that they're used to hearing. This was also occurring at that time. I love that <laughs> kind of history. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. The madness of King George or whatever. But that makes it interesting. Yeah. You know? Make it interesting. That's hard to do with a lot of topics, and I think that's how computers used to get taught. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I don't know how old you guys are. When I, guess. I was learning <laughs> in, the, in the early 80s. Uh, computers at, at college, it was significantly boring yeah. because you had to go through electrical engineering first because they wanted you to know all the components of the mm. computer before you could actually deal with drum memory. Yeah. You had to learn how the electricity was inside the drum memory and storing bits and bytes. But now it's just, hey, take this computer and type in these words and, and now you have a Python script and it yeah. just kind of works. Right? Yeah. You don't need to know how the main board was assembled. Right? And I think that, that's what's interesting. And it's now, and it's fast-paced, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not this long slog through electrical engineering before you can no, do No, we something. try to get them hands-on immediately, as fast as oh, possible, so that they can, they can actually start learning. And, and then, of course, we throw in the pieces of, as it goes along. I mean, we have uh, 11 <coughs> lessons throughout these three books. We have a 12th lesson online that's going to be integrated into the book later uh, as we do the re rewrites. Um, but... Yeah, we, we try to get them hands-on as fast as possible so they don't lose interest. We come up with all sorts of games and, and things that, that they can do. And, of course, we have to deal with, I mean, some of the things that people don't think about because they're like, oh, why do you say this? Why do you do it that way? And we say, well, for one, we have an international audience. Not everybody's going to understand English the same way. 
I mean, just ask in the security community what a penetration test is, and you'll get you know 500 different answers. You know, yeah, right. so we have to deal with that. Okay, yeah. and we also have to deal with different laws, different different customs, different cultures, because it's out there for everyone, and uh, and it, it's you know, so so we have to keep that in mind as we go forward. We want them to get their hands on. We want them to start learning, but we also have to keep everybody in mind and, and how they learn and how they approach Where do you start them off? I mean, if you got these 12 lessons, what, what's the first lesson like? Where do you, where do you, what's uh, your kickoff? Point? Right in the beginning is, is... The very beginning is on uh, uh, command the operating lines. Yeah, yeah, command lines, syntax, uh, the difference between Linux, the difference between Windows, the difference between uh, Mac. Well, you address Mac. Yeah, That's we, great. A lot of people just leave that off the table. No. Yeah. Yeah, we have all three. We have... Um, <laughs> I th the very first lesson is called being a hacker. And it's yeah. all about the idea of hacking is learning. It's, it's not just breaking into things. It's about how you figure things out. Because when I, I, I mean, my, my title in the, in, the, in the business world is hacker analyst. So what do I do? I take things apart. I go to a company. I, I break things down into pieces. That's what the Austin is about. How to categorize things, that there's only two ways to steal anything. There's only three ways that, uh, that, that you have operational security. We have these things numbered. So that, that was the whole point of the Austin, why it was a big deal when it came out, was because we said, forget everything that people think they know about cybersecurity, and let's re reinvestigate it, let's research it from the ground up as if we know nothing, and find the truths. What, what are the facts that we actually can know about it? And once we found the facts, then you can build security, you can take it apart, you can, you can really diagnose it because you know how all the pieces are supposed to work together. And that's how great discoveries in science are made. Anyway, let's take what we know, break it down, and see if there's a piece that we missed or if we can expand. We, we were amazed how nobody had done that before. This was what, uh, this was 2000. Nobody had broken it down yet. Well, cybersecurity was still in its infancy, and that's almost 20 years ago now. Uh, but this is young science anyway, right? We knew how to break stuff way back in the 70s, yeah. but not how to prevent that stuff being broken until people like you started saying, well, how do we stop that? Let's break that down. How did this happen? How did they figure this out? What is the system like? Exactly. And so the, the first lesson, let's get to that. Is being a hacker, right? Just going through how you running stuff like what? Uh, IP config or what's out there on the network? Or sure. Or all that. Or? That's lesson two is, is the command line stuff. All that, how, what, what makes up the network, how you move around. Uh, there's, there's a few things on directories, but... We try to keep it interesting. It's, it's basically getting around the computer, whichever computer you're using. For mm. Lesson one, being a hacker, is, is more about how you apply yourself. Where do you get your resources? How do you, how do you learn this? And then lesson two is command line and stuff. But right from lesson one, we're, we're having them give themselves a hacker name, uh, start thinking about how they're going to learn. avatar going? Yeah, really? So, That's great. Yeah. Start learning as fast as possible, where you can go out there, read the things in the communities. Because... The truth is many of them are already out there asking questions in hacker groups. How do I, how do I break into Facebook? How do I break into Instagram? How do I, and actually, I wrote an article, uh, How to Hack Instagram, um, which is one of the most popular articles of all time because so many people no, Google I'm that. Read it. <laughs> so many people Google it. And, and yeah. really, it's just an intro to Hacker High School. That's really what the article was. It was, you know, hacking's a grind. <laughs> you know, you don't just... Hack into Facebook. Oh, that's one of the most frequent things I have to tell my students, and they get a little impatient with me. And then I teach college, and they're impatient with me. I keep telling them it's not like NCIS, <laughs> where there's that one girl that can like do 16 keystrokes and have someone's complete life yeah. in front of them. Not even the NSA can do that. Yeah. I mean, there's pieces going to be they're going to be missing. You have to go out. You have to use open source intelligence. You have to use your scripts. You have to do some of the dark web work and, and gather intelligence, and then start going through the process of reconnaissance and footprinting yeah. and scanning and all that other stuff. Before you even yes. break into something, before yeah. you even do anything illegal. You, you, know, well, you, you got to know what you're going back yeah. there, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's amazing that uh, people didn't know. I, I tell them a, a lot that, uh, you know, if you're going to hack a, a company, how do you know what scripts to use? Even if you're going to go be a script kitty, how do you know what scripts to use? Because you don't know the operating system, yeah. right? How do you know it's Windows? Which Windows? What security level? What's, yes. You know, what are the protections? Are they using Palo Alto Networks, Cisco? Oh, what's the one from Asia, Sonic Wall? You know, yeah. you, you don't know those things until you go out and read things like LinkedIn or, or Monster or whatever the job posting is, and they say, well, we need someone to work on Palo Alto Networks. Oh, okay, so yeah. you're using Palo Alto Networks. That, that, kind of, that kind of digging work 
is something people don't realize about what hacking is. You have to know how, from a, from a macro and a micro level, you have to know how everything works together and how the thing works itself. Uh, better, better than the people who made it. Because usually the people who make it, they're only putting other parts together. A lot of right. development today is taking libraries from here and there and this and that, and, and they're developing in that way. And they don't even know how it all works, which is why a lot of vulnerable software is library vulnerable. You know? That's right. Yeah, I would, I would expect in the future we're going to start discovering a lot of JavaScript frameworks mm. have a lot of great vulnerabilities in them. I haven't seen a lot come out yet, but there's just so many. They're so ubiquitous out there. We're going to see a lot of hacking using those libraries because they're inserted into so many websites, right? Well, we did uh, we did some some math on this. Uh, that's that's the other thing. We work with a lot of universities. We do a lot of math. There's there's actually a university in Rome who's uh, who has PhD doctoral students doing Austin. So they're really yeah. We, we're getting a lot of great research based on what we've done. Wow. As a matter of fact, Austin Four was supposed to come out. But there's so much great research coming out from so many different angles, it's really hard to, to put it together now and, and make sure that we review the research that's done uh, before we put it in. Uh, it's, it's been... So you have one chariot and 500 horses. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. It's, it's, uh, it is, that's a great analogy. That's, that's where we're at. And wow. The, these lessons... Books are all based off of the Austin. Yeah. So they're, they're technology. actual real security. It's not just, so they're getting real lessons in defense, uh, real, real information on, on uh, how to move forward uh, and, and actually not just break things, but also how to secure them based on what you learn, how to so analyze. At the end of this, are they working towards a certification you can offer somebody who takes this course? Yes, we, we started now because there was such a demand for it. We have this thing called Certified Hacker Analyst, which oh. is, uh, we worked with IBM on, uh, on Lesson 12 to because they wanted junior SOC analysts. And so with all the information that they have. Security Operations Center. Right. Sorry, got to speak to the chief. Uh, seats, sorry, right? sorry. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was the idea is because there's so many job openings still. I mean, it's, numbers vary from we're, 2 million to 2.2. Well, in a couple of years, we're going to be yeah. three and a half million dollars or jobs short. short. Yeah, right. exactly. So yeah. it was about getting people interested in getting them going in this. So we worked with IBM on Lesson 12, which was that. And there was this need for schools uh, to have a, a certification direction for it. So we came up with Certified Hacker Analyst, which is based on all the material in these three books. That's how you get the grants. And, you got to uh, have a goal, yeah. Well, now, we, we got about thirty seconds yeah. left, so let's let's discuss how you guys are putting this into high schools and how people who watch the show can get involved. How can I get involved if I just known about this and I just saw this? Well, basically, you have people like Bob who just take it upon themselves to be a teacher. Okay. He, he applied himself. He has the, the the resources. He just does it, and we get a lot of teachers like that who just want this in their school. And they're willing to go forward, even if they have no security ability, because they know it's about getting students to teach themselves and working in groups. Like, What's sort the of great list learning? To? They go to hackerhighschool.org. Hackerhighschool.org. They, they get all the information. All right. You guys got about 10 seconds to promo your stuff? And I... Thank you very much yeah, for having me. <laughs> no, no, I appreciate it. This is fantastic. Yeah, hey, you have to agree. Come on back. I do a show, Cyber Underground, on Fridays. If you guys are around, we'll do another show. We'll discuss this even more if you want. Uh, but thanks for coming around, and uh, I'm sorry Andrew couldn't be here. Uh, wonderful. Come on out again. Give us updates. Maybe come out six months, three months. Yeah, you should come out. You're here. You talk about the school and the classes. He's got great stories about what the students have figured out. Uh, and I mean, we're, we're building this up like crazy. We have so many cool things going on, so many new toys coming out for this that schools can just get... Hackers in a box, basically. They get all the kit right in a box, and they can they can start. I love it. it. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thanks a lot. Aloha. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Thanks for joining us on Security Matters, everybody. Andrew will be back presently, and you won't have to deal with me anymore. And uh, just stay safe. <laughs>